Hey y'all, can you do me a favor and like this video? When you like my video, it goes up in the algorithm and I get recommended to more people so they can come and see this wonderful content. Thank you in advance and let's start this video. What up everybody? What up everybody? Let's talk about it. It's April Dawn. What up everybody? It's April Dawn. What up everybody? It's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. What up everybody? It's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. This is The Handmaid's Tale, Season 4, Episode 10. Baby, when I tell you they did that, baby, it was everything. This was the most satisfying season finale that we have had. And y'all know we have been on a long walk with this show. I've been walking. Okay, I feel like I've been walking with Jesus. I'm trying to make it to something good happening in this damn show. And they gave it to us today. They sure did. They gave it to us today. It was a little unrealistic. It was a little like wonky how we got there, but we got there, okay? So I don't want to waste any time. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's talk about Fred and Serena. So Fred and Serena are getting very close to being free. We saw the real bitch come up out of Serena like, you know, the girl that we know she is, has proven herself to be honey. Fred is getting questioned and the woman is calling him Fred and Serena meets up with Mark outside the door and basically has a list of demands. Honey, she has demands now. I'm like, wow, <laughs> we really switched it up on Mark. When she was talking to Mark, the look on his face, y'all was just like, who is this bitch? Okay, I was like, <laughs> This the one you want to lay up under, Mark. This who she is. This Serena. Welcome. Hi. Nice to meet you. She's here, okay? She was like, they need a nice house to live. The woman in the room need to be calling him commander or he's going to get up and leave. He's not going to keep talking to her. And they need to expedite this process because her baby will not be born up in here. Not up in this raggedy ass place, okay? Now, not to mention, when Fred's in the room, they ask him about a woman named Martha Bernal. I guess she was in a Jezebel's lounge, you know, the one he used to go to. He talking about some, I didn't freak with that establishment. Sir, stop lying. He tried to act like he didn't know who the lady was at first. And then eventually he was like, oh, well, her, yeah, she might have died in the accident, you know, with one of the commanders. We was like, sir, you tried it. You tried it. You're trying us. So back to Mark and Serena. Marcus just shocked, honey. He was like, so you gonna go live in Geneva with him? And she was like, yes. And he was like, as his wife? Um, yes, he says, why? She was like, I don't have to explain myself to you. Basically, mind your damn business, okay? Don't worry about why. That's my husband and I'm going. So I low-key was like, do y'all think that might be Mark, baby? The only time I could think that maybe they maybe had had sex with each other is when she met him the very first time, you know, in the cigar bar, the hotel bar or whatever, maybe that time, you know, they had a little thing yang yang going on or whatever. But other than that, I couldn't see where they could have gotten together to make the baby. But, you know, I could be wrong. I don't know. Because, I mean, the way he was looking and talking to her, I was like, wait a minute, is this something else that we need to know that's going on? Okay. Later on, before Fred leaves to go to Geneva, he comes in there to say, you know, goodbye to her and that he'll be a free man. He's going to be a father and a husband and all of that stuff when he gets out. And she's just very cold to him. So you can tell that she has reduced this down to basically a business agreement, okay? So it'll be interesting to see how this plays next season when she's a mother if they don't take the baby from her which we all hope that they will take the baby from her ass okay it'd be great if it was mark's baby and he took custody of the baby right or how this is gonna play out when she has to be a mother but you have to be nurturing you know you have to you're gonna love your child obviously and you wouldn't want your child take taken away from you so and she continue to be the villain in the story continue to put your humanity to the side to like you know uh advocate the r-wording women you know what i'm saying and and taking their babies the whole lifestyle that gilead promotes okay the everything that they do it'll be interesting to see because you know she really doesn't want to do that because she's already writing she's already doing things she's not supposed to be doing so clearly you know she's not as devout of a believer of this nonsense that she done came up with it as, as everybody else so is she going to hold true to the fake gilead you know thing or she's going to continue to stray away from that and become more independent as a woman. So it'll be interesting to see. To me, Serena actually is one of the more interesting characters on this show. So we'll we'll see how that morphs um, on next season. Because that whole love to be in power. So we're going to see how that works. The episode started off with a flashback of June and Fred. And y'all, the flashbacks are just to like show you the power balance that was between them. Um, At the beginning, the voiceover was basically make him believe it. 
You know, he's your commander. He's your whole world. So play to him. Make him believe that you like what's going on, you know, and he was dancing with her and kissing on her and groping on her at the brothel. And one of the things that they said was don't bite, don't kick, don't run, you know, in resistance. And we'll see that come up again at the end of the episode. So back to the present, June has to make another statement about what happened, but you know, it's not in the courtroom anymore. They, they're recording the statement this time. And Mark basically tells her that, you know, this is not really going to make a difference. More than likely, he's going to get out. He's going to be free. In turn, then June asks him, you know, about Fred. Is he everything that you thought he would be? And he was like, yes. I mean, he's been a very integral asset in this process. He's broken down, you know, the whole system, how everything works, the hierarchy. He done gave him them a lot of information, right? And then she basically says, you a weak ass man, because she was like, weak men, you know, they make the world go around and she look at him like, bitch, you weak and he a weak bitch. Okay, so all, both of y'all hoes, it's some hoes, all right? And she goes in there and she makes her statement. So when she's done, Luke basically this episode is trying to like comfort her and tell her, you know, Luke is just a nice, unassuming man. Luke, this whole episode, is trying to, like, tell her to let it go. You know, to 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 just tell her that, you know, they're free. Nicole is free. So, they, this, this is a miracle. Let's just be happy with what's going on. And in theory, he is absolutely right. You should just let it go. Like, at some point, you got to just get some therapy and just move on. You don't have control over everything. But we all know that June is crazy. And we all know the lengths that June will go to to get what she wants. So, although I understand Luke's point of view, it's just like, baby, she ain't the one for you no more. This ain't, this ain't the June you married. I know you realize that, but you ain't realize that, realize that, realize that. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Luke is a nice guy, y'all, but I just, <sighs> he's just, whew. so anywho, he's trying to reassure her, you know, about everything that's going on, and everybody at the house has a different opinion. Rita is kind of like reserved about the whole thing. Are you okay? Are you okay? Do you need something to eat type of situation? She's working on it with her therapist. Mora is pissed about the whole situation. She want to go to Geneva and she wants to testify against Fred, um, saying that, you know, maybe they will fit, find him unfit, basically, for leniency. But the, we all know that that's not going to happen. The deal is basically, this is just like, um, what do they call it? The rubber stamp or whatever. Like, you're just getting the rubber stamp. It's, it's really just procedure. And then her and Emily talk, and then they kind of like have this little girl's moment, like they quote in the Old Testament, the righteous will rejoice in vengeance and wash their feet with the flood with the blood of the wicked and you know june kind of laughs or whatever they and they they have a little giggle between the two of them and she basically says i really do need to let this shit go like i i need to and, and focus on my family but i just can't seem to let it go get on an episode june goes to see Fred. So this is also an important scene. And, um, you know, throughout the episode, they're like putting flashbacks. They're letting us know, like I said, the power dynamic between the two of them. And now we know that it has changed. Fred seems to see very happy, seem very happy to see her. Um, he even asked y'all, can I say, he said, can I call you by the name June? And she was like, bitch, my name been June this whole time the fuck oh hell fred is talking child and fred is saying stuff like he don't hold it against her with her testimony you know she had to put some extra sauce on it to make you know it him look real bad but you know what they had together you know was some discomforts that's what he said this motherfucker said discomforts sir you was r-wording me torturing me and you had me prisoner in your house Fred is delusional and he said something about we was sharing a relationship that we both needed. You know, it wasn't love, but you know, it was something. And she, and June is really good at like playing into this. You know, she's really good at like getting him to be comfortable. Like Fred is so easily played. Maybe not so much by Serena anymore, but he damn sure is prey to June. And he also tells her that now that he has a son, he understands what it would be like if somebody, you know, came and took his son away from him. And you know, he apologizes. And she was like, I never thought I would ever hear you apologize. For, you know what but you can tell that that apology don't mean nothing she could have not chose violence y'all she could have just took the apology and just moved on with her life but instead she chose violence and i'm here for the shit the two even toast offered when they both say they miss offered but june says she misses her strength 
You know what I'm saying? And Fred says he don't know what he missed, but you know, he just missed her. Boy, if you don't get your... She leaves out of there, and she, you know, she got him falling for the okie doke or whatever. She get in the car with Luke, and then she says, like, she want to put his ass on the wall. She want him to die. And Luke was like, June, you really got to let this go. Like, at some point, girl, you got to let this go, sis. Then we see June, uh, she goes to Mark. She goes to Mark, and she tells Mark she just wants him to drive her somewhere and just for him to listen. He like, you showed up at my damn house, you know, X, Y, and Z. This is out of line, girl. You are not in the protocols. This is not correct. And she was like, fuck all that. I need you to take me somewhere, and I need for you to just listen. Now, I'm not going to lie. This scene was a little bit unrealistic for me. I don't know about you guys. So they go somewhere. It looks like it's a border of Gilead in Canada. And so uh, they meet up with Lo they meet up with Commander Lawrence. So apparently June has arranged for all of this to be safe. And even Mark don't know what the hell is going on. Hold up. Not when, when did June become international relations? And she's setting up all these damn meetings and Mark don't know what the hell is going on. Child, I guess. But she got there. She sits with him and basically Lawrence offers her 22 women who they thought were dead or missing or whatever that Gilead has been holding hostage and they want Fred to come back because they feel like Fred should, you know, get justice for what he did in Gilead. These are the women that you think Fred's intel will save. I'll just give them to you if you just give us Fred. So Mark agrees he's going to take this to his supervisors and see what's going going on or whatever. But, but before June gets out of there, she tells Lawrence that she does not think that um, whatever punishment Gilead gives out will satisfy her. There is nothing that's going to satisfy this whole but blood at this point. We don't want blood and that's it. When they go back to the house, like I said, they all discuss how they think what's going to happen to him or whatever. And so Luke feels like he's going to go to prison. If they send him back to Gilead, he'll go to prison or he'll go to prison here. He won't be qualified. And then Emily says that he'll probably be sent to the colonies. Was she not too happy about it? You can tell that Emily is bloodthirsty too. Y'all remember when Emily killed that lady at the colonies? Y'all remember that? I remember. The thinks there'll be some type of trial and Mora is pissed. Okay, Morris happy that he gonna be gone. She kind of just like out of sight, out of mind. You know, he's gonna be gone or whatever. So, but then June and Emily have a little moment again where they like, what do you really want? And she's like, I want him to be scared. I want him to be scared for his life. Like I was when they took Hannah from me and they kidnapped me. I want him to be afraid. Like when we was in the woods. And her and Emily get to looking at each other. And I was like, what you hoes about to do? You hoes is about to plan some baby. Oh, we see Fred. He's getting up. He's getting ready. He's about to go to Geneva and live his best life and live his best life. Okay, he about to be free. He in the promised land. Child, he about to be free. So anyway, he's getting ready to go. And uh, this was the scene that brought it all home, honey. Mark came on out. He came on out and he was like, listen, um, we're going to go ahead and arrest you. Okay, because you have been found guilty or you have been found not worthy of, of leniency or something like that. And so they put him in the back of a truck, y'all. And when they was put him in the back of the truck, that Fred just came on out. Boy, that devil just hopped on out and said, I'm a man. I have rights. You can't do this to me. You can't do this to me. I'm a man. I'm like, child, he probably would have got to Geneva and forgot all about Serena and that damn baby, okay? Made him a girlfriend <laughs> and wasn't going to be worried about Serena and that baby, though. So they took him um, basically to like a, a border or a no man's land type of area that nobody has control over, and they dropped him off, and Nick picked him up. Oh, and then when he was putting him in the van, I forgot to say, he did say something about God know you, God know what you covered, and he gonna punish you, basically, and I've been seeing you looking at my wife hole, I know you want that cat, okay, and that's why you're doing all of this, to get me out of there, because that's your baby and not mine, no, <laughs> I don't know if that's that man baby, but y'all know what I'm trying to say, um, so, they throw him on a truck, they take him on out to, like I said, to the no man's land. So then we see Nick arrives because in this area, the eyes are always in control at the border. So Lawrence also meets him on the bridge and he's like, I mean, I'm so glad you're here. Like, get me out of the situation. What's going on? But when Nick shows up, you know, he takes over and is like, hey, you know, I got to take over because the eyes, you know, they control this part of the border. And so Lawrence is like, oh, well, I can't do nothing to help you. I'm sorry. You know, my hands are tight. 
Now Fred starts to get scared and Nick starts to march his ass through the woods, okay? So he marched him on out there through the woods and he's like, son, son, why would you do this to me, son? I'm like, sir, calm down. It was so He was so scared and I was just 100% here for it. And then finally Nick just punched the shit out of him like, bitch, get out of here, okay? And he said something like, what a man sows, so shall he reap. And so basically I'm throwing this scripture back at you. You deserve this shit. This is what the, you get for out here are wording people and doing all the horrible things that you've done, sir. Okay, now you're about to get it back. And she gives Nick a old nasty killer couple's kiss, okay? And <laughs> Nick kind of goes off into the wilderness, right? So he's like, where is this? Where are we at? And she was like, this is no man's land. So she opens her hands and there's a whistle and then there's a gun. So she says, pick. And he was like, what do you mean, pick? She was like, bitch, pick, oh, pick. And so he was like, I don't think he said anything. She was just like, okay. And so she blew the whistle and then all the holes came out the woods, okay? All the ladies who had been R-worded and all the victims. Emily was up in there. Moira wasn't up in there because June was looking at them in the window before she left. So Moira ain't even get to beat them up. Or I thought I might have saw them flash on Moira's face. Was Moira out there? I don't think they was. But anywho, all the holes came out the woods and she looked at him and said, started running and he was running and he was running and he was running and he was running and they was chasing him okay and then when they got to his ass i knew he was gonna fall because i was screaming at the tv chase his ass kill him beat him do it they got out there and baby when they got to him they stomped the shit out of him and i was a hundred percent here for it. How did June set all this up? We don't know. Is it realistic? No. Was it satisfying? Absolutely. I would not have wanted them to do it no other way. They beat the shit out of him. And then the next day they walked through the woods in the fresh air and they beat him all night long. Baby, they beat him all night long. To the break of break of dawn. And then they walked out of the woods. They got in the car. If you notice, a lot of times during the season, they uh, put, it's like a circle, you know, just like they did all their ceremonies in a circle. They surround the person just like they surrounded that aunt. They put her in the middle of the circle. So it's just interesting how that, you know, that's that symbolism is. Did y'all catch that? So anyway, after they finished beating his ass, they bring him, I mean, they come on out the woods. They come out the woods and they get in their car and June kind of looks up and smells the air and it's just fresh and she's just feeling, wow, I can really, you know, reset my life. I got the blood on my hands that I always wanted. Ha 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 ha. And she got blood on her face, child. So she go back to the house and she go upstairs and Nicole is up there just crying with her big head ass, okay? Cooing, just cooing, just sounding so cute. And she goes upstairs and she picks Nicole up and she's hugging her. This girl got blood all over her face and everything. And Luke come in the room like, Father God, help us. Okay, we ain't got time for this, Lord, today. Girl, what is going on? And she was like, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Just, just give me five minutes. Just give me five minutes. I'm going to move around. Just give me five minutes. And so then we see Fred's headless body on the wall with a Latin phrase underneath. Words meant don't let the bastards grind you down. Do you remember that season when they were playing chess in the room together and he taught her that phrase? So they made sure to write that under his body. And then Serena was just on the computer room. She said, no, now she waiting for her Zoom to start with Fred because you remember they said they were going to Zoom each other. So she thought she was getting ready to zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh, and the man outside was, you know, dropping off the mail. And he said, what's in this package? I don't know what's in there. And he opened the package and a ring fell out. And then a finger fell out. And he was like, oh, shit. So Serena about to get the information that Fred is dead, honey. That's where the season ended. So I, what I want to know is what's going to happen for next season. Are they going to use Fred as a martyr? And is his death going to cause some international relations problems? Because it's kind of like a, you know, unauthorized assassination. You know what I'm saying? So is that going to happen? Um, how will June, will she move forward with this? Or will she continue to grasp at power? Because June kind of seems a little power hungry too at this point. And how will her killing Fred affect her relationship with Luke? Will he be able to see past that fault? And will their relationship make it?
what about Nick's character? Is he finally going to get out of Gilead? Is he going to leave and, you know, try to escape Gilead? And what's the dynamic will be with um, Gilead and the United States and the relations between them and the war? You know, I thought Gilead would crumble more, but they kind of like left the battle thing out of this season or whatever. Um, you know, we don't know who is losing or gaining ground at this point. So there is going to be another season of the show, so I'm really excited about it. So I want to hear what you guys thought about this episode of The Handmaid's Tale and the whole season of The Handmaid's Tale, okay? So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share this video with all your friends. And I'll holler at you next time. Peace.